and it's time for another wonderfully wacky episode of Matt's Homework Helpers. Stick around, we will be right back. Matt's Homework Helpers, it's time, time, Matt's Homework Helpers, oh yeah. I tell you what, that is the most amazing song. Whoever does that must be extremely talented. Moving on, welcome everyone to Math Homework Helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. How about that? Alrighty, with us today are two super teachers. From Dundalk Middle School, we have the fantastic Mr. Kara. And from the math office, we have the awesome Mr. Tang. Hey, Max. Yeah. Are you ready for another great episode of Math Homework Helpers? Oh boy, oh boy, of course! But I am most ready for this great episode of Math Homework Helpers. I'm pretty sure that's what Mr. Tang was referring to, Max. Uh, yes, Mr. Kara, but I am referring to this episode, not another one. So, uh, which one are we talking about? This episode? Another episode? I don't see Mr. Tang. You confuse me with all your elaborate web of questioning skills! You know what? Let's try this again. Okay. Are you ready for this episode of Math Homework Helpers? Well, of course I am. I'm ready for any episode. Wait, wait. What's the any episode? Is that an episode about anything? I think it's time we get this episode started. Oh, good, good idea. idea. Boys and girls, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. All you have to do is call into the show with the math question, and you will have a chance to win one of our very cool prizes from our Math Homework Helpers Puck to Pick a Prize wall. Mr. Kara, what are our prizes for today? This week's prizes are earbuds. Ooh, let's see those earbuds. Nice. Yeah, the squishy guy. Oh, the squishy guy. Pencil Palooza. Oh, look at that, a whole bunch of, I could use that. I'm always needing need pencils. Oh, and it says BCPS TV, that's awesome. And a mystery prize. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Wait, is the mystery prize Wavy Hands? I saw wavy hands. Oh, no, that was Mr. Tank, too. Okay. All right, well, don't forget that after we help our callers with their math problems, we will drop a puck on the puck to pick a prize wall, and the caller will win whatever the prize the puck lands on. Whew. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's get things moving and go to the phones. The phone number to call in is 410-494-1459. The number again is 410-494-1459. It's right here. Hey, Max, yeah. who's our first caller of the day? Well, I will tell you. Our first caller is... Aya from Norwood. Aya, how are you doing? Hi. Hey, Aya. Aya, what grade are you in? Third. Oh, that's awesome. Third grade's really cool. You just passed the midway point there in the elementary level. <laughs> so, what is your question for us, kiddo? Um, label each missing fraction. Oh, label each missing fraction? Yeah. Okay, so are there pictures on your worksheet, Aya? Um, or do you I have, have like three number lines? Three, three number, number lines? lines? Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you tell me what the number line, what the first number line looks like? Um, it has seven ticks. Say that again. Seven ticks. Seven ticks? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Sounds like a clock. Tick, tick. Well, okay, seven I have seven ticks. Oh, there we go. All right, then what? Talk. Um, the second one has five ticks. Five ticks. Okay. And the third one? The third one has ten ticks. Ten ticks? Ooh, whoa. Yeah. All right. Now we're talking. Excellent lines there, Mr. Nice Kara. Ticks, nice Thanks. Ticks. I got them all. All right, okay. so now what do we do? So there's like fraction labels under them. Okay. 
So let's go back to the first one that you had your seven ticks. Is there something written underneath the first tick? Is there a fraction? Um, yes, it's a okay. zero um, break apart tick. A zero at the first tick? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like this, Aya. Are you watching us? Yeah. Okay, and what's on the second tick? Um, you like put a line and a zero on the first one. A line and uh, a zero? Underneath the zero? No, like there's zero and then a line that puts six. And a six? Yes. So it looks like this? Yes, back. Oh, so like zero six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now wait, should that be there? Oh, I guess it should be there. It could be there. And then the second um, is one lock six. One six? Yeah. Okay. And so the like the, the numbers go in order. Okay, okay so, so be... two six. Boom. Then three six. I call it. I call it. What's next, Max? Four, six. Then there's, Five, six. Um, six, six. there's nothing on the top and then that line with six. Okay. There's um, like four. Um, Does the last tick have six, six? Or is it yeah, a Yeah, but, okay. but the, the um, three, four, and five don't have anything on the top. Oh. Okay. So, Oh, so, so we might have solved it for you or just oh, by doing that. Oh, so we that. filled it in oh, for you, Oh, huh? excellent. Okay. So we, so the, you were missing the three and the four and the five? Yes. Okay, perfect. So we got one number line finished. Nice. So what's on our next number line? Are we starting with zero again? It's like, it's no fraction under it. It's just like a zero. Just a zero. Okay. And okay. then, is anything else written on the bottom of those ticks? It's just like a, a line and six. A line and then what number's on the bottom? Six. A six again? A five. Five, five. yeah, okay. there you go. She said fifth. fifth. Oh, fifth. Okay. Ah. Fifth. Oh, I like that. The there it is. So the denominator is five. So yes. I'm filling them all in with fifths, correct? Correct. Excellent. So you need to figure out how many fifths is this jump. Um, so how many fifths is this space right here? One. One fifth. And then when I count over to this one, how many fifths is that? Two. Two. And then if I count over another one? Three. 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 And if I count over another one, I think I might have missed a tick if we're talking fifths. Right? Because I'm on four, or did it not take you to one whole number line? They might be tri um, trying to get tricky on the fifths. Yeah, because right now be. we have four fifths, Is but in order to be one whole. Like? I just want to say the last tick has like a one. Okay. So we're going to get rid of that arrow and we'll extend our number line just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And then this is the number one, which we know is also equal to five fifths. Oh, yeah. Because if you had a pizza and there was five slices of it and that equaled a whole, that'd be one. It would be one whole pizza. Not bad. Yeah. All right. So what are we doing? So does this look good to you, Aya, your second number line? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so now we're ready for the last one, right? Yes. Okay, what, am I starting with zero again? Um, yeah, it's zero, ninth. Oh. oh, so this one has the ninths underneath? Yes. Okay, am I labeling each tick with a ninth underneath? No, they're just blank. Ooh, they're oh. all blank. Oh. So let's fill it out together. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's Except excellent. The, the last tick has nine nights. No, okay, so they give us the last one and the first one. 
Excellent. So when I take this, what's this spot? How many ninths have I shaded in? One. One ninth. And then if I shade in another one? Um, two ninths. Two ninths, good. Keep going, kiddo. And we shade um, in another one? Yep. Three ninths. Three ninths? I mean, yeah, three ninths. Good. What comes next? Four ninths. And next? Five ninths. Good. And next? Six ninths. Six ninths. And after six ninths? Seven ninths. Seven ninths. And then, whoops. Eight ninths. Eight ninths. I was getting ahead of myself there. Okay. Did you fill in your number lines the same time I was filling in mine? Yeah, I was just copying it. Oh, good. So, does this look right to you? Yes. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we could help you out, Aya. Looks fantastic to me. Yeah, and we're not done. That's right. It's now time to take a spelling test. No, wait, 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 wait. Wrong show. It's time to drop the puck. Mr. Tang, drop that puck, man. I'm dropping it. I'm dropping it. All right, Aya, let's see what you get today. And it's exciting. Earbuds. Oh, earbuds. I tell you, everybody can always use a new pair of earbuds. That's my favorite. Yeah, this is good stuff. Yep. All right, well, Aya, thanks for calling in and call back again next week, okay? Bye, Aya. Thanks, Aya. Bye. You guys ready for another caller? We yes, are. we are. All righty. Jacqueline from Featherbed, are you there? Hello. Hi, hey, Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Hey, Hi. Jacqueline, can you do me a favor and turn the volume on your TV down? Mm -hmm. Thank you, because it'll be a little easier, because there's a bit of a delay. 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 Oh, de oh sorry. All right, cool. Yes. So what's your question for us today, kiddo? Okay, so... So it says, I love the blue plan. Okay, it says, right... Oh, wait, well, wrong one. Take your time. Found it. Okay, it says... Write as a fraction, five divided by six. Five divi divided by six, interesting. Six. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we write it as a fraction, five divided by six. Mm -hmm. Did I just go ahead and do it already? Uh, uh -oh. So if we had five and we wanted to divide it by six, so I guess if I'm writing it as a fraction, I know a fraction has a line that has a numerator and a denominator, right? So yes. we could go either 5 over 6, or maybe someone might think 6 over 5. Yeah, how do you know the difference? So which one do you think it would be and why? Well, 6 over 5 is an improper fraction, so I think 5 um, divided by 6. Okay, I love that. So as an improper fraction, that would mean that that would be more than one whole, right? So that would yes. give us with one whole, and how many fifths left over? Mm, one, one and one fifth? Yeah, good. one and one fifth. Very so good. if we were to reason out loud, if we had five and we wanted to split it up by six, would, so let's, let's use pizza. Ooh, if yeah. we have five slices of pizza and we want to divide it by six people, would everyone get a slice? No. No. So. That way, this answer we know could not be right because this answer says that everyone would get one whole pizza and an extra slice left over. So that's, that way we know that it can't be 6 over 5. It has to be 5 over 6. Six over 6. I don't want to be the one that gets let, left out. Yeah, seriously. Getting a slice of pizza. Mm, I'll take it for the team. Okay, thanks. Oh, very <laughs> nice, Mr. Tang. All right, Jacqueline, does that help you out? Yes. All right, well, Great let's Great question, you Jacqueline. It's time to drop the puck, yes. Mr. Camera, do it! Here we go! Oh, I like our action camera, that's awesome! <laughs> Ooh. Oh, the pencil! Don't pencil. Get the pencil. I already got. Yeah. <laughs> ah. right, I'm in need of pencil. Oh, there good! We never have enough pencils. That's right. We'll send them right out to you, kiddo. Thanks for calling, Thanks Jacqueline. for calling, Jacqueline. Thank Bye, you. Jacqueline. We have such nice callers. All right, you guys ready for another one? Absolutely. Here we go, Nathan from Relay Elementary. Nathan, are you there? Hi, Nathan. Uh, hey, Nathan, hey, how's Nathan. it going, man? Good, how are you? I'm good. Hey, how's Mr. Barnett doing down there? Good? 
Yeah, he's good. He's my, he's my buddy. He's my pal. He's my bro. Mm -hmm. Anywho, what's your question for us today, buddy? Uh, so I have um, 96 inches. Yeah, we need to divide that. N 96 inches. Uh, 96 divided by 12 equals um, length. But you're walking around up I, I, There's like a <laughs> banging. You hear that? I do. All right, tell okay. us again there, Nathan. So it's 96 inches divided by 12, because I know what is going to be equals something. Okay, so 96 inches div divided by 12 inches equals something? Uh, divided by, um, yeah, but divided by 12. Mm -hmm. Okay, equals some unknown amount of inches. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So what strategies is your teacher helping you with? When you're dividing, uh, trying to like uh, spread inches on a foot, and then we need to figure out um how um how much feet are in um 96 inches. Okay, so are you like skip counting by 12s to figure out how many 12s can actually fit into 96 inches? Yeah. Okay, perfect. There you go. So let's start there. <laughs> So if we start with our first 12 and we go to a second 12, what's that going to be? What's 12 plus 12? Uh, 24. Okay. Nice. Hey, that was fast. That was fast. And if I add another 12 to the 24? 36. Boom! And Keep it going. another 12 uh, to that? 48. Yeah, 48. Man. 72. Wait, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Slow down! <laughs> Wait, come down to 48. Are we good? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have 60. What comes next? And then A 72. 72. There it is. 72. And after that is 84. 84, we're almost there. Let's stop here. And, oh. and then we get to 96. All right. So how many times did I count 12? One. Click it. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. So 96 inches divided by 12 inches equals, we're going to get rid of that question mark because we have an answer now. That's right. We don't need that question mark equals anymore. Equals eight. Excellent. Did we help you out? Yes. Oh, good, Nathan. I'm glad. All right, Nathan. We're gonna help you out some more. Yes. The tank is marching over to the puck. Wall. Here we go. And there it goes. And it goes down. And it is a squishy guy. Oh, squishy Yay. guy. All right. Squishy, squishy guy. Congratulations, Nathan. Yeah, we'll send the red out to you, bud. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. Bye. Bye. Awesome. You guys ready? We are I keep ready. Asking if you, ready. I guess I should stop asking if you're ready because you know what? I know you guys are ready. We're always, you're always ready. ready. Our next caller is our favorite Bobby from our Beautis Middle School. Bobby, how's it going today? I'm doing good. Hi, right. Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hello. Hey, Bobby, I have a question for you. Did you go to the Meyerhoff yesterday? Meyerhoff? Huh? What? Did you go to hey. the Meyerhoff yesterday? See the BSO? Meyer. I didn't go to the Meyerhoff. No? Oh, I know. But I think I'm pretty sure part of your school was there. I think I saw them. I saw some Arbutus oh. kids. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> it's all good. No worries. Yep. So, Bobby, what is your question for us today, man? Okay. 2N plus 3N um, minus 3N in parentheses plus Oh, boy. Six. Plus 6? <laughs> I think you said plus n. I said n. I said plus n. n. All right, so we got two n plus. What did you say? How many? Um. Let's see, two n plus um. Nine n plus three n plus n. Okie dokie. Uh, oh, plus, plus three, three n. n plus n. Wow. Okay. That's a lot of n's. Yeah. Hey, Bobby. Let's make this easy. What's n? Oh wait, that right. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay. All right, so what do we do? Okay. So the n that does not have the number, it's just basically one. Okay, so should we put a one in front of it? Yes. 
All right, what and what, what else do we know? Oh. Okay, so we got to add them all up. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. 2n two two n plus 9n plus 3n plus 1n. So 2n plus 9n equals 11n. Good. Okay. And what we like to do in the math world is make sure we're organized and keep our information streaming nice and long like that. What do you want to do next? Yep, yep. 3n plus 2n. 5n. Where do we have the where do we have the two? Oh, oh never mind, never mind. Um, never mind. Um, 11n plus 3n equals 14. Good. Good. I was just seeing if you were paying attention there, Mr. Peggy. Yeah, and, and that's why we're and that's why we try to stay organized. There it yeah. is. Proven the point. All right, so now what? And then 14n plus a 1n equals 15n. Nicely done. <laughs> All right. And is that, is that what we want? Is that our solution? Yep. All right, so there's nothing yep. else then. There it is. Oh, nice little right. order of operations, adding a variables up. So let me, let me just get this straight so you don't have to know what n is, huh? It could just be part of the problem? It could be anything. Yep. Wow. It anything. Could, it could be this. Ah! Ha. All right. <laughs> Bring it back to the script. Way to go, Mr. Care. Okay, it's time to drop the puck. Here right. we go, Bobby. Here drop we go. Drop, Drop the that puck. puck. Drop that puck. And Drop that puck. Ooh. Oh, All right. our pencils. Pencil Palooza. <laughs> Excellent. Nice, bud. Bobby, thanks for calling in. in. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, man. <laughs> Call us again next week. Have a good night. Thanks, Bobby. All righty. Here we go. Oh, we have another caller from Feather Bed Lane, guys. It's Haiti. Haiti, are you there? Yes, hello. Hello, Hi. Haiti. Happy Hi. Wednesday to you. So what's your question for us today? Okay, so my question is, it says, Missy says that five, five, um, I don't know how to read this. Um, is it, is it, can, can you spell it? Is it a word? No, it's, it's five and then a line under five and then six. Okay. Oh, so does it look like this? Are you watching us? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Do we know what that's called? Uh, uh, something with an S. Okay, so it is called a fraction, but I'm going to yeah. let you finish reading what Sally says. Okay, equals six divided by five. Is she correct? Why or why not? Okay. So let's think about this for a second. She says that five over six equals six divided by five. Yeah. This is really, this sounds like, yeah, was it's very this similar Aya's problem? To uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline's oh, yeah. problem. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jacqueline's my cousin. Oh, oh. there no you way. go. Well, Jacqueline just <laughs> called in and she had a very similar question. Very similar uh -huh. question. And <laughs> what Mr. Tang told her was when we read this, we can read it as a fraction, five sixths, or it also means five divided by six. Oh, okay. Okay. So, because a fraction is very, it is doing division. So if we, if we divided this, 5 divided by 6, would we have a number that was greater than 1 or less than 1? Um, well, what fraction equals 1? Greater than 1? Okay, well, let me ask you this. And that was a good question because that was going to be my next question, Sorry. Mr. Tang. I didn't That's mean to okay. get ahead of you. That's all right. What fraction equals 1 whole? I'm going to bring it back to pizza. So let's Love say, it. I know, and this time I'm not getting left out either. <laughs> it has, the pizza has six slices, okay? It's cut into six. If I want to eat the whole pizza by myself and not share, how many slices am I going to get to eat? How many slices mm. were in the pizza? What do you think, kiddo? Uh, eight? Well, normally pizza's cut into eight, they are, but our right. pizza we're cutting into six slices, just for the help, for the sake of um, better understanding this. If we have six slices all together, how many slices do we have 
all together. There's my pizza. Nice. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six slices in my pizza. If I'm going to eat the whole pizza all by myself and not share, how many slices am I going to get to eat? She's all eat of them, five. Oh. Well, close. There's, there's six of them, so I'm going to eat all six slices all by myself. Sorry, guys. It's so, okay. I'll just order <laughs> another one. So one whole would equal six, six. But we're talking about five, six, or five divided by six. So is that going to be less than one whole or more than one whole? Mm, more. Well, let's look at it this way. Five and six. Is it greater than, less than, or equal to? Oh, nice pulling out the signs. Six is greater than five. Excellent. Six is greater than five, so five is less than six. So if we actually did the division problem here, our answer would be less than one. So is this the same thing as this? Mm, yes. Okay. So if I had six divided by five, I have my same six slices, and there are five of us here. Would we each at least get one slice of pizza? Mm, yes. That's yes, right. we would. And there would be one slice left over for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this would be larger than one whole. Does that make sense, Haiti? Yes. Okay. But your original problem was, is five, six equal to six? divided by five, or is five divided by six equal or the same as six divided by five? Thumbs up for yes, thumb down for no. What do you think? I can't see your thumb, can you tell me? Um. I was gonna say, how are you doing that one, Mr. Kara? I don't know, I, I tried to impressive. like channel in, it didn't work. I've got pizza on my mind. I don't even think I have thumbs. So even though they have, bo even though they both have five and six, because they're in a little bit of a different order, it completely changes yes. it. So these two are not equal because one is greater than one and the other one is less than one. So Sally's wrong. Poor Sally. She, she made no pizza for her. She needs to she watch our show. She made a mistake. All right, does that help Did you, Haiti? Yes. Okay. okay, good. I'm glad we could help you, Haiti. That's a tough one. That's a, it's kind of tough to get used Fractions to seeing. Fractions are tough. Yeah. Fractions are tough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. But you know what? Practice makes perfect. Let's just keep working at it. That's the way okay. to do it. All and right. you still get a prize. That's right. Here we go. Mr. Tang, drop that puck. Drop that puck. Drop that puck. I hope I don't get what I already got. Oh, oh. mystery you just got prize. The mystery prize, kiddo. <laughs> so we'll have mystery to call prize. back. And yeah, that'll now. come out to you in the next couple days, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Call back anytime. Tell your cousin we said hi. So cool. All righty. We have another caller. Oh, another one from Norwood. Savannah, are you there? Savannah? Yes. Hi, hi. Savannah. Hi, Savannah. So, Savannah, what grade are you in? Third. And do you have a third grade math question for us? Third. Okay, good. Do you uh, have a question for us? Yes. All right, go ahead. Tell us what it is, kiddo. Whenever you're ready, Savannah. Um, so. It's a dramatic buildup. I, I feel like this. we need a drum roll. Does this have to do with <laughs> fractions? Um. It has to do with um. Yes. Oh. All right. So go ahead. Tell us what it is, kiddo. Do you have number lines? So there's 16 dots. 16 dots? How and many? You and you have to um, do them like into two multiplication questions and two um, division questions. Oh. So oh. is it like array? So it's like equal groups and arrays maybe? All right, so how many dots are there? Was it 16, Savannah? Um, there, there's 16. 16? Okay, so do we want to arrange them there's in? 15. Oh, 15? 15? 15. Okay, and how are they arranged? Are they in rows and columns? Yeah. 
All right, so how many in the row and how many in the column? Um, there's, there's five in the column. Okay, five in the column. One, two, three, four, five. How many columns? And there's three in the rows. Okay, so nice. each row has three. Okay, so then we can fill in the rest of it. Fill in the dots. Do you like my array? Can you see it? Looks good to me. Yeah. All right. So then we have to write two multiplication problems and two, two division problems? Yes. Okie dokes. All right, let's start with the multiplication then. Do you see any multiplication that we can do here? This is a pretty abstract thinking. Yeah, what do you know about these arrays? What do you know about the array with the rows and the columns? Um. I think you can do five times three. Okay. Oh, really good. Nice. So five times three. That says we have five groups of three, right? So we can look at it like this. One, two, three, four, five. So five groups of three. What's that equal? I believe that's equals to five Twinkies is what you have up there. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. So let's go ahead and do that equals 15. And can we see this another way of using multiplication? So we looked at five groups of three. Is there um, an You can do three times five. Oh, right. I love it. So we could do three times five. So three groups of five. Here's one group here, another group, and another. So we have three groups of five. And what does that equal? Okay, so same answer. So we know we're on the right track. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you have 5 times 3 or 3 times 5, it always equals the same amount? Savannah, is that, is that true? Yeah. Oh, wow. right. Savannah says yeah. it's true. It's called the commutative property. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Good All right. to know. So we're halfway there. We have to do division problems now, right, Savannah? Yeah. Okay. So what do we want to start with? We want to start with our total, right? So for both of these, we can start totally. with 15. So let's start with the top one. 15 divided by what? Equals the missing piece. So if we took 15. You can do 5. Okay. So 15 divided by 5. Very similar to what we were doing before. If we put these in equal groups of five, how many is in each group? Three. All right. Good job. They look like the bottom is side of a Twinkie. Or is that just me? Do they have the three cream filling things? I've never seen a Twinkie like that. Oh. No. Uh, they you know what? Like if they're green, you probably don't want to eat them. Stacked chocolate chip cookies. Savannah, what's the last part here? We have yeah. 15. And we, maybe we want to do, instead of five groups, we could do three groups, right? Yeah. All right, and if we do, if we divided 15 divided by three, what would we have in each group? Five. All there it right. is. Good job, Savannah. Savannah, did we help you out today? Yes. All right. All right. Oh, good. Well, Savannah, we're not done yet. We're gonna drop that puck. Drop Here we go, puck. Savannah. Yeah, Mr. Karen's going to drop it. Here we go. Whoa, Whoa. I am going to drop she it. she did drop like it. Like off the, the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey, I caught it, though. Nice catch. All right, here we go. We're going to try that again. I got way too excited. There it is. Oh, Ooh, squishy guy. Squishy guy. Congratulations. You. You're Thank welcome. you for calling in. Yeah. Oh, man. We got another relay caller, guys. Audi, are you there? Audi. Hi, Audi. Audi, 
Audie. Hello? Hey, hey Audie. Oh, hello. Hello. Audie, how you doing today? Good. Good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm totally good. Hey, make sure you tell Mr. Barnett I said hi. He's my bro. He's my bud. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so what's your question for us today? Okay, so um, if three, if A equals 80. A equals 80. Okay. Well, then what is 2A divided by 40? Ooh. Hey, good one. Hey, that's a good one. All right, so, Audie, help me out here. What do I have to do with this 80 now? Um, replace it with with the 2A. Replace it with the, replace it with the 2A, or I'm just going to put it in for the A? Put it in for the A. Okay, so I have a question now, because if I just put it in for the A, I get something that looks like this. Hmm. Oh, you use a multiplication symbol. Oh, okay, great. Use a multiplication symbol. Eight. Perfect. So, Audie, I did not leave a whole lot of room, so I'm going to use this for my multiplication symbol. Have you seen that before? Yes. Awesome. Because sometimes when we're working with letters, variables, we don't want to use an X because it looks like another variable. So I'm just going to use my dot, and I know then that I have to multiply. So, let's go ahead and multiply. What is 2 times 80? I'm going to... 160. Excellent. Good. So, you did exactly what I was thinking. You thought of your basic math fact of 2 times 8 and then just annex that 0. So, we have 160. So, now I have 160 divided by 40. I can go back to that same strategy and look at my basic math fact. And what is 16 divided by 4? Four? 4. 4. And do I need any zeros after that answer? No. Why not? Do you know? No. Why? Um, only because, um, Four times four, the basic fact will be 16. Excellent. And then they both have just one zero at the end, right? So if we're taking 40 yes. and we're putting that 40, it's the place value into 160, it's only going to go in four times. But, Adi, real quick, how could I check to make sure I'm right? You could multiply 40 with 4. Excellent. So if I multiply 4 times 40, what do I come up with? 160. 160. So I have checked and made sure that I was correct. So did we help you out, Adi, and give you the right answer? Yes. Excellent. I love when that happens. I do, too. That's our job over here at the Math Homer Helpers Hideout, along with doing something else, and that is dropping pucks. Yes. Mr. Tang! I got you. I got you, Audie. Mr. Tang's going to make sure it goes in the puck. Drop this time. that puck. There it is. And Ooh, earbuds. They are proving Excellent. to be a popular. Hey. Yeah. 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 Right up to you, kiddo. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Awesome. You know, we use math so many ways in life, not just in math class. We do. We do. Let's head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. Let's go. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here at BCPS Copy and Print Center with Mark. Hello, Maria, how are you today? I'm great, Mark. Can you tell me what you're doing and how you use math? Sure, I use math every day at work. 
Today, I'm printing notepads. When we print pads, first we have to determine how many sheets of paper have to be printed. Mm -hmm. For example, we are printing a job now that is for 12,000 pads with 100 sheets per pad. The artwork is set up to print four pads per sheet, so to figure out how many sheets of paper you would have to multiply 12,000 times 100 and divide by four. Oh, I get it. This will give you the total number of sheets to be printed. 12,000 times 100 equals 1.2 million sheets. Then divide by four per sheet, which comes to 300,000 sheets of paper to get printed. <gasps> wow, that's a lot of paper. After that, we have to measure to cut the sheet down into the individual pads. With careful measuring, each pad measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, Mark. You showed us another great way of how we can use math every day at BCPS. Well, thank you, Maria. Have a great day. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. Man, I tell you what, math is everywhere. It is everywhere. so cool. It surrounds us. It binds <laughs> us. It, oh, wait, wrong thing. Anyway, moving on. Uh, who do we got on the phone? Uh, Liliana from Norwood, are you there? Liliana? Oh. Hey. hey, Liliana. Hi, Liliana. Dramatic pause. Liliana, how's it going today? Good. I have a question for you. Do you hope it snows next week? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me Mr. Too. Karen and I were talking before <laughs> the show about that. We need some snow around here, people. All right. <laughs> Liliana, what is your question for us today? Um, John played an measurement of, of ruling. Measurement of what? Of a ruler. Hmm. Of a ruler? Yeah. Okay. okay. With, the ru with the ruler, okay. That rules. What are we measuring with the ruler? Um, so it says one foot equals three inches. Okay. One foot equals blank inches. I think I got a foot. Yeah, I got feet. This one? Hold on. No, I got two. Oh, I got okay, two. Good. Two. Right, so Max has two feet. Oh, yeah. And then the next one is two feet equals blank inches. Oh. Oh. This is getting more complex. All right. Do we have any more information? Then the next one is three feet equals blank inches. I have a cousin with three feet. Nice guy, though. Nice guy. <laughs> and do we have any more information, Liliana? And um, four feet equals blank inches. Okay. Anything else you have? No. Okay, so is there anything that you know or that you've learned recently that will help us solve this problem? Um. No, not really. I just started learning it today. Okay, so let's talk about it. So clearly there's a relationship between feet and inches, right? Do you mm -hmm. happen to have a ruler in front of you? No. Okay, well let's see if I can pull one up. I was just going to say, I think we got one in there, Mr. Tang. Math tool, ruler. Okay, so this one only goes up to... It only goes up to six. It's a little oh. tough to see, unfortunately. Oh, wait, hold oh. on. What? Ooh. Look at that. Look, that we're rules. all learning something new on Math Homework Helpers right now. Hey, that thing's really cool. All of a sudden, it's growing. OK, so take a look at this. I mean, clearly, it's not to scale, but we have 12 inches here. And 12 okay. inches does equal one foot. OK, mm -hmm. have you heard that before? Yeah. All right. So for one foot, we can put in 12 inches. So now here comes the tricky part. How do we figure out the rest of these blanks? If one foot equals 12 inches, what's a good strategy to figure out how many inches are in two feet? Um, maybe you can do 12 plus 12. That's a great oh, strategy. I like that. So if we have 12 and we add another 12 to it, what do we have? 24. 24. There you go. 
That oh, was I some see, really good math. Each 12 represents one foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how would we figure out how many inches are in three feet? Um, you can do 12 plus 12 plus 12. Okay, do we have to do it all from the beginning again, or can we use what we already know? We can use what we know. All right, so we know that two feet is 24 inches, so can we just add 12 to that? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Well, that's a good idea. That saves a little time. Um, all right. So what's 20? I think it's 36. Okay. Good job. Very nice. All right, one more to go, right? Yeah. So I think, I think a second grader would say we could add 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. What do you think? Um, yeah. Okay. You could. We do could we want to do, do it that way? Yeah. <laughs> we could, but didn't we just figure out what three groups of 12 equaled? With 36? Yeah. So instead of doing that, let's just go ahead and add 12 more. Okay. That's so much faster. All right, so what's 36 plus 12? Um, 48. All right, 48. So in four feet, we have 48 inches. Mm -hmm. That's some really good thinking you just did there, Liliana. Yeah. Did we help you? Yes. Awesome. We'll help Very you great. one more time. Yes. Here it is, Mr. Karen's going to drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize Here ball. Here we go. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. man, another oh man, mystery. another mystery, mystery prize. Mystery prize. Oh, Yay, we will send Thanks for calling in. Yeah, we'll send that right out to you. Thank you so much, Oliana. Bye. So, bye. Bye. So before we take our next caller, we're going to head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a Mighty Math Minute. Nice. Hi, my name is Trinity, and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Today's problem is 1,432 times 4. First thing we're going to do is write it vertically. First, we're going to do 2 times 4, so that would be 8. Then after, we're going to do 3 times 4, and that would be 12, but instead of writing 12, like right on the line, we're going to put 2 there and then carry the 1. After that is 4 times 4, which would be 16. And then you add the 1, so it would be 17. And then you carry the 1 from the 17, and then 4 times 1 would be 4. And add the 1, and that would be 5. So your answer is 5,728. Mighty Math Minutes! I love those Mighty Math Minutes. That was awesome. They are so cool. All righty, guys, speaking of so cool, our next caller is from Warren Elementary. Warren, Ele Warren Elementary. I can't talk all of a sudden. Ashley, are you there? Yeah. How you yeah, doing, Ashley? Ashley. Good. How's the flute playing? Good. Oh, very good. All righty. <laughs> Ashley, what is your math question for us today? Well, if there are 800 millimeters, how many are there in meters? A lot of measurement today. A lot of measurement, yeah. Okay, you know what? Let me, I'm going to use our symbols today. So can you say the question one more time, Ashley? If there are 800 millimeters, how much are there in meters? Okay, okay. so we got to figure out what that is in meters. Mm. Okay, Ashley. Your teacher, does this look right to you? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So what strategies is your teacher teaching you right now to convert measurements? Um, he, uses, he uses decimals. Okay, she moves the decimals. So we have, is there a decimal in our 800 millimeters? Yeah. Okay, there's always an imaginary or an invisible decimal when we have whole numbers. That's like my friends! Yeah. <laughs> Next time I talk to this. Yep. So where would our decimal go? Where would our invisible decimal go when we're talking about 800? It would go at the very end of the 800. At the very end. Okay. 
So then what would your teacher, which way would she move the decimal? So she said if she's going bigger, I think she goes to the right. Okay. And if she is going smaller, she goes to the left. Okay, so are we going bigger or smaller? Um, I think we're going bigger. Okay, we are going bigger. So I always used to teach my students when I did fifth grade, if we went from smaller to larger, we would do an operation called division. If we went larger to smaller, we would do an operation called multiplication. <gasps> so it looks like you're making an X with your arms. Yes. Woo! That's awesome. Thanks. So that's why we can move the decimal. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, because we don't want to just say, hey, we're going to move decimals. Right. Yeah, right? And what, le what allows you to do that? What's the relationship between millimeters and meters? Um, I oh. don't know. They're M words. Okay. They, they are M words. <laughs> Boom! Instead of two, there's one. There it okay. is. Okay, so there is our number system is based on tens. And our meter, have you seen, does your teacher have a meter stick or sometimes it's called a yardstick? Um, no. No? Okay, it's one of those really big, it's like a really big ruler. <laughs> and we call it a meter stick or a yardstick depending on what it's measuring. So millimeters is going to be really, really tiny. Have you ever seen a ruler that have all those little tiny <laughs> flashes in them? Yeah. And little ticks? Okay, so millimeters, really, really tiny. So when you're trying to figure out how many of this large 800 millimeters are in a meter, your number is going to be bigger or smaller. Do you, is your answer going to be larger than 800 or smaller than 800? It's going to be larger. It's going to be larger than 800? Okay. So if we're going smaller to larger, we're going to divide, right? Yep. Okay. So do you have any idea what we might divide by? Um, I think, I don't know. Okay. That's okay. You come to the right place, so kiddo. We also used to do this thing. Let's say this is our meter. Okay. And then a little bit larger or a little bit smaller than a meter we would have a centimeter. Have you talked about centimeters? Yeah. And then we would have our millimeters. And there's a lot of other things that go along with that as well. Okay? You have your, like your kilometer, decameter, which is even hectometer. Bigger, which is even bigger than yeah. that. Yeah, they go way, way <laughs> up here. We're not going to get into those. So notice how many jumps am I making from a millimeter to get to a meter. I'm making two. I'm making two jumps, but within those two jumps are ten little ticks. Okay? Because it's ten times, a centimeter is ten times larger than a millimeter, and a meter is ten times larger than a centimeter. Yep. All right. So, keeping that in mind, we have our 800 millimeters. What do you think? our meter might be? How many of those? Um, well, my thinking process is I think that we should move the decimal over to the right slice. Okay, so we're going this way. I think you are correct. So that means how many meters equals 800 millimeters? Eight. Eight. And that's because you did 800 mathematically divided by 100 because 10 times 10 equals 100. And it took us those two jumps to get from millimeters to meters. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Very cool. Good. Well, we are not done with you yet. It's time to take the puck and place it on the puck to make a prize ball. There it is. Let's drop it. Drop that puck. Ooh, All right. You got Excellent. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Ashley. All righty. You guys ready for another caller? We are. Oh, I did it again. I know you're ready. I just like saying it. All right, here we go. Uh, Patiana, are you there? Yeah. How are you? Good. Oh, Hi, good. Hi. Well, listen, kiddo, we want to make sure we get your question in. We only got four minutes left, so tell us what it is so we can hurry and quick and, and make sure we can help you with it. If I can stop talking. Okay. Ah! Um, I need help with fractions, like measuring. Okay. Measuring with fractions? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a specific question? Yeah. Like, what are inches? Oh, what, what are inches? 
Okay, so what are inches? So were you watching a show earlier? Yeah. Of course okay. she was. So one of your friends from Norwood actually called in and asked a question. Is it Lily? Yes, Liliana. Yep. Liliana, yeah. So she called yeah. in and she asked us a question about inches as well. Now, the thing, the thing about these inches is that it's a unit of measurement, right? I don't think you can see this here. Uh, the ruler looks a little It's a little tricky, yeah. Screen. Let's figure um, out how to make it. But if you look at a ruler, oh, that's better. you have two, usually two different sides. One's centimeters <laughs> and one's inches. In America, uh -huh. we use the uh, customary unit of measurement where we measure using inches. So an in inches, uh, usually like if you take a look at your finger, that little top part of your finger, that's about an inch. Is anything else that you guys think is about an inch long? Hmm. A small paper clip? A paper clip is maybe. Is about an inch? So, th so that's a unit of measurement that we use to measure things, um, and that is an yeah. inch. Oh, okay. And we also know, let's see, how many inches are in a foot? So 12 inches equals one foot. There we go. So that we can, uh, with things that are a little bit bigger, we can measure using feet. And then from there, we can use yards, which are even, so three feet equal a yard. And then there's a mile. I always forget, it's like 5,000. It's a big number. It's a big yeah. one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so there you go. Can we help you? Can we get a prize? Let's give her a prize. Oh. Drop a prize, Ms. DeCara. Let's do it. Woohoo! Here goes the last puck of the day. Earbuds again! Earbuds. This episode brought to you out. by Earbuds. All right, well, thank you for coming in, kiddo. Welcome home. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, Bye. kids, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. Check it out, and be sure to tell your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, only here, here on BZBS TV. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.